give everybody a few minutes and while people join. Hey, Joseph, thank you again. All right. Oh, no camera. Well, no camera here because I've got too many people in the house and privacy issues. So today you're not going to see my smiling face. Um, all right, let's let's get started. And I'm going to share my screen just to do that. So if you can add your name into the meeting group file, that would be great. And then I'll go back one. Um, yeah. So yeah. So um, welcome everybody to the uh, the the OKD working group meeting this week. Um, we've had a, some really good progress on the OKD.io site that we'll talk about a little bit later, but I'd like to have Vadim talk about the latest release and um, maybe take um, over the the screen share as well and walk through the open issues um, too. So if you want to take it away, um, Vadim, that would be great. Um, sure. Not, not certain if I can do the screen sharing, but uh, in voice, let me have, so I usually create a tracking issue where we list all the issues we fix and some unresolvable issues we're hitting. So the biggest problem fixed in this release was um, mirrorable payloads. We finally have the fix deployed to our build farms and I can, and I still have to do a few manual checks, but we finally have a way to make it properly uh, to schema two so that it will be mirrorable. Um, that was the largest probably problem fix now. We also picked up quite a few um, OCP fixes, most notably Thanos component has been using way too much memory that was resolved. Um, and we also have a payload with sudo and kernel CV fixes coming from Fedora. Um, I think the most problematic parts remaining here are, oh wait, uh, we also fixed finally the installation on vSphere over than OpenStack, at least it passes in our CI. Uh, that was the remaining parts we needed to fix in uh, system D or result D fixes. Um, of course, we need an additional confirmation of that because we still don't trust CI entirely. On the um, uh, Vadim, sorry, my audio was broken. Uh, did you say mirroring works for the current version? This image should be properly mirrorable, yep. Oh, okay, great. We cannot do this retroactively. We cannot change the previous uh, releases, unfortunately, because that would mess up the manifest hashes and we would have to do the whole signing again. And we would effectively have to release a new payload for the previous version. But Maybe it's all was, it. uh, Oh, sorry. Have a delay, no, sorry. Um, I, 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 um, maybe you remember that I wrote a few scripts and it works. I uh, beautified them, and I currently I upgrade an air gapped cluster in my company, not my production one. But uh, I, I only had to disable the repositories for 4.5 five, uh, five, and uh, use my scripts. They mirror uh, and fix the images on Quay. It should be feasible for everybody who has uh, this problem. And then you have to apply, force apply for sure as a fixed release payload, and it seems to work. I'm not at the stage of the machine config operator, but almost. Uh, and um, yes, but it's not possible to install uh, a fresh cluster with this fixed uh, payload because the installer has some, uh, yeah, you, you know what I mean, the wrong yeah, shards. That's, that's, that's acceptable, as in all of your Manifest hashes are different, so you have to override the signature check. And uh, it's not the latest stable release, so it's definitely not recommended to be installed anyway. Yeah. Uh, um, right, but going ahead, we, we probably won't have to change a lot, and things would be relatively simple, but 
In any way, we now have a way how to fix it manually, so that's a way to go. I haven't closed that issue because I want to make sure that uh, our build farms are constantly producing the valid images, but uh, we can count it as half fixed, basically. Um, yeah, the most unresolved issues are probably two very long-standing problems with OVN and OpenShift as the end. These are becoming variants. Various people are commenting there. I think we're mixing several bugs there. So if anybody understands SDNs or anything else, um, both of those GitHub issues should have uh, Bugzilla's counterparts, and we should be commenting there and providing necessary information. Um, um, that's pretty much you... it. Yeah. Vadim, you mentioned uh, uh, yesterday that there is an, a network manager problem with the uh, current release. Is this fixed or? Um, network manager in Fedora has been updated. And due to our, due to the way we deliver packages, so we deliver Fedora CrewOS from it stable, and we have to add it the matching version of the network manager OBS. On 4.6 upgrades is noticeable, but it breaks uh, 4.5 to 4.6 upgrade. Mm -hmm. I will hopefully we will release another 4.6 stable this week, maybe next week, with the fix included. But direct 4.5 to 4.6 upgrades are not yet possible for this release. Um, hopefully that that will be fixed next time. Mm -hmm. And uh, speaking of the future. Um, we are preparing 4.7 release candidate, not yet in stable, but something would be great to, to look into. Um, it's not yet done because we need to fix uh, the SSH authentication problem in MCO first. Otherwise, um, installations would be undebuggable. You would not be able to SSH there. So once that resolved, we would have an out of, um, out of channel basically for seven release candidate deployed and uh, hopefully by the time OCP switches releases for seven stable will go uh, to for seven as well. Um, yeah, that's I think pretty much all I've got for now. So, um, so I know uh, I, I've been talking with Joseph a lot because he's been doing a lot of work on the okd.io site for us. Um, so everybody should take a look at that. And, but one of one of the issues is, and, and I know Joseph's been struggling with this too, is that the, because of the the fast cadence of the four six releases, which I hilariously think that's amazing to say the word fast um, because of all the delays to get to four point oh. Um, but to see about um, getting a little bit more stability, I think in the releases is he's having some issues because each time he has a release, he's having and maybe Joseph can say this better than I can. Um, you know, what, how we um, are getting better, how, how can we get better stability in each of these releases so that um, they don't break people as they try and update? Um, and maybe Joseph, if you want to add in a few more words here, because I know this was a big concern of yours. Yeah, there is no big big news, but I think um, OKD or OpenShift brings so much. Um, Features with it, yeah, that you don't have to care about the host system. That's one of the top features for us. And uh, if exactly that is a problem in OKD, I think it's not. Uh, yeah, we we should get a workaround for that. Test more, spread the tests among the community members if possible. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, because in four or five upgrading was so was uh, was almost fun to do uh, because it al always worked and I, I would love to get in this situation back. I know that Fedora had a few problems that they were not synchronized with OKD. Maybe that's a possible fix for the situation in four seven. I I don't know. You laugh, but I, I, yeah, yeah, maybe you can say something about that. <laughs> I see this. 
I yeah. see the situation as four to five exactly the reverse because we had to do a lot of like work just to get it working. We had to at least components forked and we had to rebase them often. Mm -hmm. uh, now we have one less at least um, MCO and the patch to installer in for seven is much smaller and already in review. Oh, I forgot to mention the most important uh, news ever. Our enhancement has been merged, so we're now officially part of OpenShift. And uh, folks in 4.8 would start reviewing um, our podcast for, for installing. Uh, what, uh, why we suffer so many instability? Uh, Fedora Core S 33 definitely has, has added some more to that, but the main reason is we like tests. As in, we have CI runs for um, Overt, OpenStack, uh, and I don't know if I could trust them because they show that things are passing. I don't see bug reports after a couple of weeks. We probably should be able to, to just trust them that they are, these are valid and this is the configuration our users are using. As for vSphere, uh, we have plenty of vSphere's um, and we get results there. So I trust this here CI because it's pretty much close to what we're seeing. Um, as for the cadence, OpenShift does releases weekly on four streams, three in, in, uh, in the good days. And we promote in like two or three days from candidate to stable. So that's like four times faster than OKD. And the instability, and stability, on the other hand, doesn't come just because it's just been lying there. Uh, nobody used it, and after a couple of weeks, it's ready. It comes after the bugs are being fixed. So if we delay the cadence, we will have bugs coming from OCP being fixed and stable much longer, like uh, Thanos thing. If we had weekly releases, we would have it fixed um, sooner. But if we didn't, uh, we would say, I'm sorry, we have a cadence of one month, so you all have to wait or use nightlies. Yeah. So testing nightlies more often uh, would probably be the best solution right now. Yeah, and I think that's that's what when Joseph and I were talking yesterday, it was it was it is it's all about the testing and trying to figure out a game plan so that we can get more community support for the testing and I can see Jamie and maybe I have Jamie on mute by accident. Sorry guys, because we had a bit of noise going on. Um, everybody again, um, just self mute if you're not talking. Um, so one of the things that we could do, I, I think, is get better documentation around what it takes to test on the different platform because I know Joseph, you were talking about um, testing on Azure. Um, because that was... Mm, yeah, because I think vSphere is very, very common in companies. Yeah. So because we, because also the, all the developers... Sorry, I have a delay and I hear myself. Um, because I think all these developer features of OpenShift and OKD are, are absolutely uh, mostly used on-premises because there is a source code and uh, on premises you have vSphere normally today's um, may change but nowadays i think vSphere is the most uh, commonly used um, platform on premises that's why i think we do ourselves a favor to exactly push that one um, the most yeah because on azure in production i don't need all these developer features yeah, because uh, when I have normally tested my stuff on premises, I don't know what you think about that. I, am I completely wrong in this? Uh... That's perfectly aligns with what we see in in uh, OCP, and judging by the amount of OKD bugs, that's pretty much the same. Uh, the problem with um, that is the I has. A, for vSphere has much less capacity, and there is not much we can do about this quickly. Um, we've added vSphere tests for almost all critical OKD components, um, and once we totally sure that the, we trust them, because right now a couple of uh, conformance tests 
are failing and we need to find out if it's uh, a, a random noise is it the uh, noisy neighbors or is it some OKD instability very much likely there is just some noise and we need to figure out before we make it a blocking job and ensure that it's so um luckily with john 14 we worked last two weeks that was uh that was perfect john has been able to test quite a lot of changes very, very rapidly. Um, that was incredibly fruitful. Um, I'm a bit worried about other platforms and uh, the whole bare metal UBI thing because there is no recipe which fits everyone, meaning uh, almost every bare metal UBI bug is unactionable um, it, because it depends on the local setup. It either is a documentation or a common bug which affects all the platforms. So we would need to figure out something about that, something like an OKD recommended setup which we test, or I don't even know. It's a really tough situation. Uh, but I think that is actually. Let me just jump in here very quickly. I think that is actually the uh, one issue with most UPI setups, not just. Uh, bare metal, but also vSphere and also the other platforms because UPI is just the user provides the infrastructure. We can't really, uh, yeah, have one piece of code account for all the possibilities there. Um, so I think easier, or much easier, it would be much easier for us if uh, people were, were to go to uh, the IPI installation because we, we know what we're getting there. Um, obviously, we have folks that have. Uh, these few systems that are too old. I think Neil, that was the problem with your company, um, and other folks that just don't have that uh, infrastructure. So um, that's not feasible for everybody. But um, as a recommendation, I think yeah, it should be IPI uh, because we can well, you, be, we can debug that much much more easily. Yeah, because in, also I can speak for my company. We also um, must use uh, IPI uh, UPI because we have an external load balancer and lots of uh, specialities but i think um, if we if we can manage to just uh, define a core system for upi that always is tested and you have to ensure that your load balancer works and so on you have to take care about that alone and dns and so on then uh, maybe maybe we can encapsulate the core for upi and this one is tested very good i don't know if it we have we have a vSphere we have a vSphere UPI test, but the problem is that we don't know if we should trust it. Is it the common? Is it the shared configuration across most uh, our users or not? In we can MVP, talk about that. Well, well, you don't have to. We can do. We can do a survey. We can do. A, we can do a survey main amongst people on this call and so on, but that might not represent the whole community. In OCP, we have a bit more information about what's happening. So, and we would have to more, use the, their, what, what they have. And we, we still have one uh, incompatibility issue with the vSphere UPI uh, test flow that we currently have for OCP. It actually still uses um, the IF uh, CFG files for um, defining the network config. And that is not supported in, in Fedora Core OS. I actually have a PR open on the installer repository, no, on the release repository, release or one of those um, to change that. I think it's on the installer, and then we should be able to run uh, the the vSphere UPI test for OKD as well. Mm -hmm. um, that we, we should probably just uh, ping ping the installer folks again on that because it's a tiny PR and it would in, enable us to run uh, that test mm -hmm. for OKD as well. Mm, this is great. Do you think that it's possible that we can run uh, your tests on our local setups, or is it too complicated to set that up as a test environment? At least at the point that a running cluster is here, and I throw manifests on that, and I understand no, if the very, setup. Yeah, sorry, that's very that's very easy. Uh, we run a subset of conformance Kubernetes tests, and um, at this stage, we don't look too deep into why they are failing, honestly. I'm mostly concerned about install because if things, some important part breaks during install, it most likely will, will not let it finish at all. 
uh, when it comes to conformance tests, they usually verify Kubernetes parts, the API server can can respond, and so on. All of that is shared with uh, OCP anyway, and it's real, mm -hmm. real hard. Um, I would need to find the way how to run the the tests. Uh, obviously, it's all it's all public. It's just not a bit tricky to to actually make it run because it depends on the platform you might need. Bastion host if your uh, if your stuff needs to be SSH to and so on. Um, what I'm mostly concerned is is install and uh, upgrade verification. Mm -hmm. We have tests for upgrade, which is effectively running OCM upgrade, but just in Golang application because we need to watch for disruptions of uh, API server. Um, so verifying that on nightlies and giving us a fast feedback on if we broke something or um, some important fix landed in OCP and we need to do a release now, that would that would benefit OKD most if I um, I think so. So you mean um, if we if we could um, find an automated setup that uh, maybe um, installs OKD uh, upgrades it with nightlies and uh, is, is that all, or do you run tests on, on the installation? No, I think um, automated setup, we have it in CI. We might want mm -hmm. to extend it, and since our enhancement is merged, we now have full rights to do that. Um, mm -hmm. The thing is, we cannot trust CI if it does not match what our community sends box to. So if you have some throwaway cluster, uh, you would use your own configuration the way you want it to look, and we would ensure that our CI results are actually valid and have the same failures as in actual user setup, because uh, without establishing that trust, all of that CI is useless. Um, say, for instance, that SDN issue uh, we are passing from release to release. It was originally reported for GCP, but uh, folks with bare metal jumped in and also said, I also have this. Um, we contacted SDN folks and they said it's GCP specific setup. Some health checks were not set correctly. It was fixed later in the installer. And now I don't know what to do. Should we close it because it was reported originally for GCP and apparently fixed? Or it's actually a long standing bug somewhere else and GCP just shows it. Uh, this kind of a link and having actionable bugs would benefit most. So what is the what is the next step here? Because um, we we talk about this a lot about trying to get the com community to to step in and do some of this testing on on a regular basis for each of the releases. And Jamie, um, I don't know if you want to speak up, but he's written some automated setup for UPI and vSphere. Is this is it helpful if someone like Joseph or Neil or Jamie at, at their or Bruce sets up a uh, testing pipeline um, and just for their platform and just does nightly every time we do a release does a nightly run of the, the testing is that something that we should be aspiring to I would love that I, I bought a, a Ryzen system a, a nice one and I need it's always idling around so uh, I, I could do that I, I use I use as uh, a script provided in the in the guides in the OKD uh, uh, repo, I adjusted it a little bit, and uh, I always do all installations with the setup. It's almost completely automated, and yeah, that's perfect. That sounds exactly what we need. Um, we don't. I don't think we want this to be like happening every single nightly, but if we would check installs and ideally upgrades, that would be perfect. That would be great. Mm -hmm. So. Um, when, and, and, and Joseph and I have been talking, I'm just going to be honest, Joseph and I have been talking a lot on the side, um, how we do the OKD site upgrade. Um, what, and if Jamie gets his, his um, automated setup and UPI stuff documented and um, available, will it help, would it help if we did sort of, I have talked often about hosting sort of a hackathon for building out the operators and stuff, but instead if we did a hackathon in which the morning was, walk through this automated setup for testing UPI or whatever um, and how to do it and then had 
um, the rest of the afternoon sort of coaching sessions. Everybody could have their breakout room and be trying to do, do it for the, on their system, um, whatever they are, so that they could get some you know one-on-one -on -one help um, if they were crashing or burning or had questions. But is is that like because I can set up uh, a you know a, a date somewhere out there in the next month or so to do that um, and ask everybody who's interested in doing these sort of nightly setups or release cycle and we could just get that going um, so that we had those tests and that stuff. So um, if that's is that something people would like to have to see happen? Neil, Bruce, Joseph, community members, non-Red Hatters, would you use that if between Jamie and I, we got a date together that worked for everybody and hosted a morning session. Walk, and Jamie maybe explains that, and Vadim and Christian were available. Um, and then in the afternoon, maybe two hour session after that explanation, you had breakout rooms where people could come and coach you um, if you were having problems. And would be great. I think yeah. that'd be fantastic. Okay, so that's a that's a generally really nice idea, I and mean, it make it would help make uh, OKD and the OpenShift appear a lot less daunting to people. Yeah, and as as Bruce is saying in the chat, we need to get the the documentation done first. So, um, and and again next week we'll have, we'll have another doc section because we were so successful with it last week. Um, and well, on the Tuesday, so maybe we can each week we can work through a different set of docs that we need to get done. Um, so I, I, that's that's what I was doing, and I can use um, either Blue Jeans, which everybody obviously can use here, and use the prime time version, and we can have breakout rooms in it, or um, set up a hop in um, where we have a main stage and a bunch of pseudo tracks, um, and, and figure figure out that. So um, use hop in. That, it's better. Okay. What? All right. Everybody says plus one to hop in. I like hop in too. So, hop yeah. So, so that that would be you know, and maybe even you know, I'm not going to try anything else I'm new and different these days. Yeah. We oh, I have lots of prepaid seats um, still, so that's great. Um, yeah. So I'm thinking I'm thinking that's uh, because we talk a good game about it, and everybody. And I think now we have the, we're at the tipping point where we really need to get the stability and this testing cycles in so that it's not always on Vadim and Christian um, and the other folks to do this. And I would really love to get those 63 bugs that are out there or issues um, down to something more reasonable um, sooner than later. So um, that would be very helpful. So I will work with you, Jamie. Jamie, are you available next Tuesday? I know you were on vacation last week. Yep, I will be uh, back uh, and back in action and ready to help in the next couple of days. Okay, so that that's my goal, and you know, all of you non-red hatters who are here, if we can, I'll do some sort of calendary thing and and find a date that works for everybody. And Jamie, once we have the docs done, um, and and it probably will be a weekend day. I'm thinking, um, just because then everybody won't have the distractions. <coughs> of their work, um, if that's okay with folks. But I'd really like to get through this issue and get this um, done and get this this set up and then we can focus on operators or whatever else comes up next. So that works for folks. A day, one day uh, where we set, where we tell about our environments and set up test environments, may, uh, ideally a common one, this would be great. Yeah. yeah. To, because this is a, a black a black box to me. If OKD is running, it runs very very smooth, very stable. But sometimes you are searching for the missing missing link here, and I'm always stressing Vadim uh, at the yeah in in the night sometimes in the night uh, to get the one hint. And uh, I think we can help each other much more if we get the sessions. And also relieves the stress from Vadim and Christian. And that would be that would be great. And then anyone who doesn't want to work on that, we can hang out in another another chat room there and work on documentation or something even more fun um, during the day. Um, 
So yeah, so maybe and Josh, I might tap you to, to give me a hand with that as well, because you know that would be that would be fun. Um, and Josh is still working without sound, or maybe I muted him. Um, and if you guys don't know Josh, Josh is in the open source um, team here at Red Hat um, in the CTO office. So Mr. Kubernetes these days and other things. Um, so it's wonderful to have you here, even if you're not fully on camera. Um, we'll get okay. you there. Um, <laughs> yeah, thanks. That, that would be great. Um, so, yeah, so we've, we've beaten that horse, um, and he's not dead yet, so we'll get there. Um, I was going to reiterate, and I put the tweet in there. It is on Thursday, our session, um, at uh, devcomp.cz. So, and I think Vadim and, and Christian, you're on tap with me to um, do that. It's 5.30 Central European team time. So just a reminder, and I'll send a note out to the mailing list shortly. Um, reminding everybody who wants to come. Um, and if you see my tweet and retweet it, um, and you're going to come, um, then we'll get more people at the party. So uh, that would be wonderful. All right, let's see um, what else is on our agenda today. Did I promise anybody of like five minutes of fame to talk about something? I know I every once in a while I'm, I mess up. Is someone sitting there with a presentation that they're expecting to give today? Okay, DIO. Oh, yes. Thank you. I'm going to stop sharing again. And um, I'm going to let Joseph, um, if you would like to drive through. Um, you, and it's you can show it, show it, please, okay. and have you comment it. Okay, okd.io. Okay, so, um, based on last Tuesday's um, working group on docs, we've made some changes. And um, we being Joseph, um, and um, I just put them into power uh, placed this morning. So we tried to follow and simplify this um, the navigation here with what is OKD, installation, documentation, community, and there's still more work to be done and the FAQ and going here. So we, what I'd like everybody to do is, is to test that. We did put the general surgeon's warning for 3.11 in. Thank you very much. Um, and if you're still looking for OKD, it takes you to this page, which is looks very similar to what it looked like before. So um, we try to to keep people from 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 using three three eleven if we can help. And then there's the OKD section. Um, we do and and oh, that looks very nice. I, I like, see what you did there. Um, we took out the video that was the roadmap video here for now and put in the, the impression slider. Um, I would like to ask um, that we update the um, what's on YouTube for the OKD4 update. So because um, we needed one for uh, KubeCon May and Red Hat Summit. Um, and so um, I will tap um, probably Vadim and Charo and, and Christian to set up a time to re-record a little video for here as well as the slider and work through updating some of this verbiage here. So if you have comments on the verbiage, we've, uh, oops, the, this guy's floating over. I'll have to fix that. You, you must press control um, F5, Diane, it's in the cache. Okay. Uh -huh. Also this jumping uh, images have gone, they all have the same size now. So um, we've changed this a little bit here. There's still some more tweaking to do um, on this, but we've tried to clean up this section so that people just come straight to the community. There's a little section on um, uh, contri contribution that we're going to try and get a little more verbiage over here. But um, the structure is pretty much here, and I have, for some reason, lost all of my images here, so I think I probably did something in the build. Um, but there should be the images here that will click through to the different projects. And these two pieces are going to be merged. Um, one of the, somehow I've lost all of the images really quickly. So no, say are in. It's on my PC, it looks great. Yeah, it does. Maybe it's I'm just, your internet just, connection is. Yeah, so we've, we've rejigged the structure, um, and now it's about rejigging some of the content as well. Um, some other sites. What I've noticed around this end user section have a section in the GitHub repo where 
folks can add their names if they are um, using OpenShift uh, or using OKD or using the open source project. And I'd like to do that rather than um, relying on m metadata tags here so that people can self-add themselves to being using OKD. So I'll, I'm going to work through that in the, in the GitHub repo on the community side and pull it from there instead. But this is the structure um, and the one other thing, yeah, there's everything now looking better. Looking better. The one other thing that we were going to add, and, and maybe Joseph, is um, to add a blog. Um, yes. And the one trepidation I have about the blog is um, I'm a, a big opponent of documenting by blogging. So um, I will try um, and coach people when things look like they should be pieces of documentation that we need to um, turn them into real documentation and maintain them. And speaking of documentation, um, when you select the version, it says the latest and 3.11 is there. So I'm thinking um, we need to do an ask of the docs team to have like a four listed below here so that people are well, here because the latest takes you to the latest version here of four, but it doesn't reference four in here. So um, there's a little jig that we have to do um, for that to look better too. So what I, you know, feedback anyone right now or otherwise on the mailing list, um, let me the, know. The, the thing with the blog is, um, I think we need a central place, uh, ideally on OKDIO where we can, can write things like migration um, hints, yeah, um, as example for people that are sitting on 4.5 and want to migrate to 4.6, there are a few easy steps they must do, and they it's it's uh, yeah, and they are on on uh, 4.6. But you have to search through several issues, and um, yeah, be very brave uh, to do that. Uh, I think a little bit more documentation in a central place, maybe maybe only with links to issues. Yeah, but this would be great. I'm missing that a lot. And then should, get... Sorry, should we also call out that the OpenShift OKD GitHub repo exists? I know in the beginning we were trying to uh, push that as the place to get like open uh, OKD specific documentation, whereas uh, the actual doc site was just adapted from the uh, just like a reference. Is that changing with with this new effort, or um, no? I don't think so. I mean, OKDIO has a link to both official documentation and our GitHub repo, where we can easily push some things like Joseph suggested blog updates or some kind of a microblog with fresh uh, changes. And there should be an um, a GitHub icon which leads you to OpenShift. That's OKD. We could also use um, the OKD um, GitHub repo because GitHub has this GitHub pages. We could also use this. Um, then you have to write, I think, OK, no, not OKD, OpenShift. Ah, that's not good. Because the, uh, you need the company or your name dot GitHub IO. And then you have a page where you can set up a blog, a micro blog. I'm not sure if we have. GitHub pages enabled on OpenShift organization and GitHub. This is mm -hmm. centrally managed. Probably uh, we would have to jump through a few hoops if we really want this. So I think it's easier to do it in the, in the repo where OKD lives um, than to try and jump through those hoops, to be quite honest. Um, I will try. Um, but. It's a better place, yes. Yeah, so this, if, if people don't know, common uh, GitHub commons and OKD and Project Quay and a few others live over here in um, OKD.io. They live here with a, the dash CS after it, and that way I don't have to jump through those hoops with um, the engineering team. And that's that's where we're at. Um, so feedback, thoughts, folks, that's, you know, we'll, we'll keep um, editing it and revising it. And um, you can also 
make a pull request against this repo as well as if you have something that you'd like to the burning issues and if we set up the blog in here then you can also contribute um, here as well and it's an easy um, pull request to push it I'll stop sharing again and uh, let's see if I go here if I covered off there so I'm um, just going to make sure um, the other part of the conversation, I think we've covered this off, Joseph, I'm sorry if I, I shortchanged you on it, was um, the best, the most valuable place to test. I think we, we covered that with vSphere over bare metal and AWS. And that's going to use that. So, and the other piece is looking at the agenda here. Um, we've hit everything that was on the agenda. So is there anything else that um, Vadim, Christian, or anyone else wants to bring up today? And I'll stop sharing my screen and hook you all in the So I, I, I can tease uh, some of the things that are going to come to OKD um, in, the, in the coming months. But I think I want to first hear from Neil and Sri about their uh, enhancement proposal for multi-arch clusters. OK, let's do that. If Neil is unmuted. Yes. Yes, I am now. Neil is flying. I was. I was also flying. Yes. Um, the heck are these? These are hard. Um, okay. What's up? Now, let's see if screen sharing will work. Whoa, different buttons. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah. Y'all see my screen? Yep. Yep. All right. So, um, Tree and I had been talking about uh, for a few weeks or so now, and we started writing this uh, yesterday and then realized we have no idea what we're doing. Um, which eh. uh, we we were talking we talked about a few weeks back about the idea of being able to ha use OKD with mixed architectures in the clusters where you optimize by having most of your things be one architecture and then some of the things be another or an even balance or whatever um, and in this case specifically we were interested in the idea of having AR64 for most of the nodes, and then x86 where it is wanted or needed, um, or vice versa, just you know, cost optimization and performance optimization reasons. Um, and we looked around and didn't see anything in particular that said that there was anything about multi-arch other than multi-arch is a key initiative of OpenShift, which is a wonderful statement with nothing to back it. And so, uh, we wanted to try to come up with something to sort of get the ball rolling. Exactly. Um, so we, we kind of started trying to write this and then it turned out we have no idea what we're doing. And so I think Sri, you had some questions in particular, better questions than I did about what we're supposed to do here with this enhancement proposal stuff. Cause I have no idea what we're doing. Yeah. Like there was, Oh, Christian. I oh, don't no, sorry, go, go ahead first. I, I'll No, I'll, yeah. Uh, I was there's there's a lot of stuff that's very like specific to the workflow. Like if you scroll down Neil, they're like, what are the risks and mitigations? What is the design details? And uh I think for for a proposal like this, it sort of felt to me looking at examples of of other enhancements that for something like this, it would need to be rather more involved than either of us really have the knowledge to sort of speak to. Um, yeah, so. um, I, I think the, the best way to do this is to just put something up and um, then during the review, um, fill in the, the missing uh, parts as they, yeah, as they are kind of reviewed. Uh, I don't think it has to be perfect um, from the beginning. 
Uh, one thing I, where you, um, Neil, you were just explaining how, how you were thinking about this um, kind of having an ARM uh, cluster and then adding x86 nodes to it. I would uh, start from kind of the status quo where the standard cluster would be x86 and you want to add a, a node with a different architecture to that. But it, I would formulate it in an, in an agnostic way where you just say we want to add um, worker nodes uh, that have a different CPU architecture to the cluster. Um, yeah, no, just like I, that. I did, specifically, I did specifically want to generalize this to being not specifically calling out ARCH64, but one of the principal motivators for wanting to write this is specifically that running an OpenShift cluster is too freaking expensive. And one of the things that, uh, you know, I, I did a, a back of the napkin analysis, so nothing particularly concrete or useful to, to put out there, but like running most of the nodes as ARCH64 and then only having things that absolutely needed to be x86 using that, like for example, if they're virtualization nodes or whatnot, or if they're edge nodes or something like that, it cuts the cost by more than 60%, like trying to run them. So I, 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 don't, I don't doubt that. Um, I, I, I do think that is a different goal though, um, cutting the costs. So I, I, I think this has to be agnostic, so it can be used. So, so in the end, you can essentially say, I'm gonna install my, install my ARM cluster and then add a few x86 or power nodes to it or whatever. Um, but mm -hmm. because we don't yet even have ARM, here, this is actually one of the teasers uh, I'm gonna, I, I was gonna follow up with. So the, the multi-arch effort is going on and um, I don't have any specific dates yet, but um, we are gonna be starting an ARM effort soon and that effort is going to be OKD first. Okay. So um, I think that is great. And I think that work will go hand in hand with this proposal. But I don't think you should, uh, kind of, because I don't. I think you want too much here um, when you say you want this to be ARM-based master nodes, which isn't really, shouldn't, at least it shouldn't be uh, the concern of that proposal. This should be just like uh, heterogeneous, hetero, heterogeneous, uh, heterogeneous cluster architecture, yeah. heterogeneous cluster, cluster architecture, um, where some of the worker nodes have a different architecture. Whereas the normal setup is uh, homogenous, everything master and workers uh, share the same architecture. And this should be agnostic enough so you can say, whatever the architecture we have uh, for the master nodes, we can still add a, a machine config pool essentially um, and machine sets uh, for worker nodes of a different architecture. So I think uh, for the implementation details here, this is mostly something that will have to be adapted or the, the MCO and the machine API operator will have to be adapted to account for this. Um, yeah. Okay. But I don't think you should you should be you should be saying we, we want this to run on ARM masters because that is kind of the ARM multi arch effort, which uh, yeah I think is much broader than, than what this enhancement proposal should be. We, but that, we that's, initially that's my did. Two cents on this. Yeah, and that that makes total sense. We initially did have it as like um, you know, be able to run workers of multiple different architectures paired to the same set of masters, but then uh, Neil and I were doing a little bit of digging, and it seems like uh, Red Hat CoreOS has like ARM-based builds. So we were wondering if OCP already had ARM versions of all of the necessary containers ready to go so that you could run like a whole ARM cluster because we couldn't find any information one way or the other apart from the aforementioned vague statements. So, yeah, th th there's no, we only have the base operating system RCOS and we also have FCOS builds, um, but we don't have any containers yet. Right. I wasn't even sure if we had FCOS because I couldn't find so I vaguely recalled that there were ARCH64 builds of FCOS, but I couldn't find them anywhere. And unfortunately, the Fedora Core OS build system does not publicly exist. Like I can't go to builds.coreos.fedoraproject.org and actually see what's happening. It's not recorded in Koji, so I have actually no idea how anything works or how it's being released or what is being built or what is being released. 
And so I yeah, don't they're being built, but I don't think they're being uh, distributed to to anywhere yet. We don't upload them um, to any of the clouds yet. So um, that is probably a thing that will be done uh, quite soon because this effort is now kind of starting to uh, yeah to to roll. Um, so this will be one of the first things we'll do uh, because we already built those images and we'll start with distributing them as soon as we kind of start the actual work uh, on it. We're planning this right now and it's, yeah, it's not too far off now. Cool. Yeah, so I have to mention, it, you, if you're planning to submit this enhancement, which is very ambitious, I have to say, it needs to be renamed from multi-arch to mixed arch because multi-arch means you can have x64 OpenShift cluster and ARM64 or whatever, any other. But these are separated, don't, don't touch each other. What you're proposing is to have mixed arch workers or nodes in the cluster, meaning all the workload they share needs to be able uh, to be available in two both versions and work with each other perfectly, which is a very so, complex technical task, I have to say. Wait, what? Why is that? A, why is that distinction exist? Because out because multi arch has traditionally meant you're in a heterogeneous architecture environment. That's been the case with OpenStack. That's been the case with. Uh, with even VMware, with when they introduced ARM uh, ESXi and things like that. So why is this different with OpenShift? Because even Kubernetes upstream calls multi-arch clusters being mixed architecture in the same cluster, in multiple architectures in the same cluster. Oh, I mean, of course you can you can do that in Kubernetes. You would join an ARM for uh, node to X to whatever, any other cluster, but you still have to carry your own network. You still have to carry your own CNI plugins. You have to carry your own ingresses and make sure that these are running on some particular nodes. That's Kubernetes, You your problems. In OpenShift, we deploy, for instance, a network using a daemon set, meaning it runs on all nodes. That means some pods are actually uh, ARM, and some are x64. And these are built from the same source, but they're still different, meaning they might show up bugs. And in OpenShift, we don't allow customizing this. We cannot set two different pool specs. These have to point to one single image. Uh, this is fixed by introducing manifest lists, and OC admin release has to understand those manifest lists, properly build them, and embed for every single uh, image, it has to include two copies of it. So your payload grows from five gigs to at least 10 if you just want to support two architectures. There are tons and tons of problems like that. I am not actually disagreeing with that, with that stuff. What I was mainly saying is I was confused why we are calling it, what, why we are using the term mixed architecture instead of multi-arch. For I think it's just, just architecture cluster. I think it's just historically because multi arch is already taken and already implemented in OCP. It just would be confusing for for the reviewers. Okay, that's fine. I just wanted to know that I, I understand the complexity of actually doing this. It's just, my my question was mainly the terminology because upstream Kubernetes, OpenStack, Linux, all these things refer to the idea of a heterogeneous stuff as multi arch rather than the term mixed arch. So I went with that term because that's what everyone else was using. Neil, naming naming and cache invalidation, Neil. <laughs> Three things, naming and cache invalidation. DNS, <laughs> DNS, always DNS. <laughs> oh man, I've got question. a story about DNS. <laughs> I, have, I have a quick question for Christian. Um, the folks that are working on the multi-arch work internally at Red Hat, is there anyone from that team that's um, on that's currently coming to the OKD working group, or is that something we could ask someone to come and, and give us an update on? Um, I don't think anybody is currently uh, joining these meetings. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll get somebody. I, I, let, let's talk about this uh, after uh, Diane uh, quickly and 
I think we'll we'll get some updates from from them soon. All right. So I, I'm here from the power side, obviously. But I thought I think so. you're referring to the the arm side, right? I I love power yeah, too. Yeah, true. Don't I, I love power? It's just I can't afford it. <laughs> Well, yeah, well, honestly, I, I would prefer good. power, honestly, if it was more affordable. <laughs> yeah, an architecture that actually makes sense and I and computers actually work the way they're supposed to. Oh, me. Sign me up. <laughs> computers don't, don't work. That's a myth. <laughs> All right. Uh, fine. So, um, so what, what I wanted to to kind of say uh, about the announcement, um, Neil and three. Um, I think that is actually going to be very useful. Or it could be very useful to have kind of a an ARM worker and um, then use that to build ARM containers on it, or the same for power. So we wouldn't need an entire power or ARM cluster uh, for building these images. Um, and we could that's a, possibly yeah, that's reuse why our, I want it. That's yeah, and we could reuse our CI like system Prow and build ARM containers with the same system um, or multi arch containers with that same system uh, possibly. Um, so yeah, that would be great to have. Some of the, that was some of the motivation for me as well because uh, at work we have an open we have an op, open build service instance for building packages and stuff and it already does this kind of mixed architecture scheduling things and we started exploring ARM based stuff for some workloads and it turned out to be really nice but we also have no actual way of of doing containers and, and applications on that architecture platform right now. And so I wanted to try to get ahead of that and see if we can get, get stuff in place for that. So yeah, I, I would definitely suggest you you just uh, open that PR uh, as a work in progress draft thing and tag all the architects on them, um, buddy, me, everybody you know. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll kind of, uh, work on that uh, as a group um, and also get the attention from from architects and get their input. Uh, I think that's very important here. So, um, yeah, so we're at the end of the hour with two minutes to spare. Um, and Joseph's asked, actually, can you spend two minutes um, talking about the future of OKD, which I think is a much longer conversation than two minutes. I, I can actually try to make it short in 30 seconds. Um, so I think the, the biggest uh, part um, is that multi-arch effort um, and the most interesting part for us. Then obviously we have the open shift roadmap out. Uh, all of that is gonna be included in OKD, obviously. Um, and now specific to OKD, uh, we, we, we've been missing the IPI bare metal platform um, in OKD. We haven't been supporting it. And we've made some progress towards supporting that. Um, there's one, one uh, PR missing that has to go in, and then we can start building um, Ironic, uh, yeah, open shift IPI, uh, bare metal IPI installs with Ironic. Um, okay, cool. And I think that might be another thing that uh, folks uh, might be able to actually use if you have an IPME uh, supported or a machine that supports IPME or three machines that support IPME, um, you'll be able to, to install your own cluster on, on bare metal hardware. Um, so we hope to merge that, uh, miss that last outstanding PR uh, soon, and then um, builds will be starting first in 4.8, but we'll try to backport that uh, at least to 4.7, which is also gonna be released soon. So yeah, that's kind of my update. That was good in less than two minutes. Well, well done. And and I'm going to use the last minute um, because, as Josh asked, is Red Hat Summit and KubeCon are coming, so we need to refresh the um, the demos that we have and do an updated um, what's OKD. I think I had a 60 second one or, or just under 60, you know, two minute one. So I'm just going to tap on um, Charo and Vadim and, and Christian to to help me with that. Um, and if folks have short demos. Um, of things that they'd like to um, reach out to me and, and I can always host a session like this blue jeans and record it and um, edit it into something that we can use in the in the demo as well so um, we can have a thread on that in the mailing list um, on Google groups so that's that's my ask and I think uh, Josh was here because I think he wants them all by Friday because um, that's when they always want them six months ahead of every event um, so <clears throat> So I will I will work on the what is OPD and getting the site content up to snuff so that it, it syncs. And um, 
we can talk about um, how to get a roadmap um, and what is OKD two minute video done um, sometime. Two minutes isn't hard to do. It's just finding the one hour to record the two minutes in everyone's schedule. That's hard to do. So I'll work on that with you guys um, in Slack. And then Jamie, go to the beach with your kid. Go back on vacation. I don't know where you are, but um, uh, I wish I was there because the beach would be nice right now. So um, thank you all. A really good conversation today. And I will work with Jamie and everybody else to find that time for a testing hackathon and getting the documentation on that. We will have another meeting next week on docs. Um, so if you're interested in that, please come. Um, and any feedback on OKD.io or typos or things that should be there that aren't, um, send a note um, and maybe put docs in the title in the, the mailing list um, on the Google group or send them directly to me or get there. Get it to me somehow. All right. Any final words, Vadim, Christian? All right. Good. Thanks. Um, let, let me just let me just thank Vadim for um, his his work on OKD. It's uh, I think I, it's been a lot lately. I think um, especially on his shoulders. So uh, I really hugely appreciate uh, your work, Vadim. Um, and I think we all do. So yeah, thank you, Vadim. Yeah. Right. The unsung hero of this release is actually John Fortin, because he's been helping with this here and things a lot. Yeah, I think this this is where we can push. Um, and try and take some of it off the shoulders in the next little while now that we've gotten through this. Because 4.7 is coming soon, and um, it's going to be another game changer. So looking forward to working with you all on that. All right, Vadim, you're the best. Take care, everybody. Bye. Thank Bye. You.